Haas uses different types of spindle encoders, magnetic shaft encoders, magnetic hub encoders, and the non-contact encoders. In this video, we're gonna talk about what they are, how they work, and when there's a problem, how do we correct it? A magnetic encoder requires a pulley mounted directly to the encoder shaft and an additional pulley mounted directly to the spindle motor shaft and a small belt connect both pulleys together. A magnetic hub style encoder is an encoder that's mounted directly to the output shaft of the spindle motor and required no pulleys or no belts. A non-contact spindle encoder is a two-part system. It comprised of a reed head and a magnetic ring. It requires a specific gap, height, and runout to function correctly. An encoder is simply a sensing device that provides feedback so the machine knows the position and speed of the spindle, and they all work the same way. The information in this video will cover Haas Classic Control and the next generation control. But if you need to change parameters on the next generation control, after troubleshooting and repair, you need some assistance from your local Haas factory outlet. Let's take a look at what can go wrong with the magnetic encoders. First, a spindle speed was commanded, and the machine generates an alarm 234 spindle cable fault. The problem could be the spindle encoder cable. So put the machine in e-stop and look at the spindle display to see the spindle speed counter. Rotate the spindle by hand. Now when everything is working correctly, the spindle RPM will change as you rotate the spindle without any alarm. If there's a zero reading on the spindle display as the spindle rotates, this indicates the spindle encoder is not providing a feedback to the control, which means the encoder needs to be checked. Start by checking the encoder cable in the electrical cabinet. Power down the machine and follow all the necessary safety precautions. Remove the cover from the processor stack and check the encoder cable connection at P20 on the processor board of the classic Haas control and P6 of the next generation processor board. Make sure the connector is connected correctly and securely. Check the pin housing. Make sure they are not pulled back in the jacket. This looks okay. Now we've checked the cable connection at the board, so now let's shift our focus to the spindle head and check the connection. Remove the spindle head cover and locate the spindle encoder on top of the motor. Ensure that the cable connection is tight and secure at the encoder head and remove the cover and check the connection as well. If the cable connections are okay, and you're still getting the cable fault alarm, the cable is damaged internally. So, install the new cable in the reed head, run the cable on the outside, and plug it in the processor, and test it again. In this case, the alarm is gone, so clearly there was something wrong with that cable. Remember, when you see a cable fault on the screen, it usually means there's a problem with the cable, so concentrate on that first. Next, we look at two more symptoms, both with similar solutions. The first symptom is when the spindle orientation is commanded, but the spindle does not hold position. The spindle orients back and forth and generate alarm 116, spindle orient fault. The second symptom is when the spindle speed is tested at a value like 500 RPM, but the actual spindle turns really slow and the load meter fluctuates with high loads. These symptoms could be caused by an encoder belt missing some teeth, the pulley on the motor shaft may be worn down, and the encoder belt may need to be tensioned. So power down the machine and follow all the necessary safety precaution. The spindle head cover is already off. Loosen the four bolts that mount the encoder to the motor. Push and hold the tensioner towards a small pulley, then tighten two of the four fasteners. Remove the belt from the encoder pulley and remove the encoder assembly from the motor. Sit the encoder assembly aside, 
flip the belt over and check for missing teeth. This looks good. Check the encoder pulley on the motor shaft for damage. If you have to replace the belt or the pulley on a machine that is equipped with through spindle coolant, just remove the bearingless union assembly from the motor. Before removing the extension tube, you must first block the spindle drive dock to stop it from rotating and then unscrew the extension tube clockwise and then remove it. Before you remove the old pulley, check the height of the pulley on the motor shaft. Some pulley height requires a spacer between the bottom of the pulley and the top of the balancing hub. The encoder pulley on this motor shaft is good, but I'm going to show you an example of how to remove an encoder pulley from an old used motor. Let's take a look. There are several different methods out there that you can use to remove an encoder pulley from a spindle motor shaft. You can make a drill bushing and drill directly through it, or you may be tempted to use a chisel and a hammer. That's not a good idea. It will damage the motor bearings for sure. I'm using a Dremel tool with a metal cutting blade. It's very simple and effective. I just picked this up at my local hardware store for about a hundred bucks or so. Compare that to using a chisel and hammer. That will run you thousands of dollars. You get the idea. Okay. Break off the upper flange from the encoder pulley. Before we start cutting the motor shaft, plug the threaded hole on top of the spindle motor and use the Dremel to cut two slots on either side of the old pulley all the way to the motor shaft. Then use a flat screwdriver to split it apart. Once the old pulley is removed from the motor shaft, clean the shaft up and make sure it's free from burrs. Now, heat up the new pulley on a hot plate at 540 degrees for about two minutes. Now if you have to set the spacer on the spindle motor, now is the time to do it. Put on a pair of heat resistant gloves and install the new pulley on the motor shaft. Let it cool for a few minutes. Install the spindle encoder assembly to the motor and tighten two of the four fasteners with the tension bracket pushed towards the small pulley. Install the belt, then loosen the two fasteners and rotate the motor to check the belt tension. Then tighten all four fasteners. And then install the cooling shaft and tighten to spec. With an indicator and mag base, check the flatness and the runout of the cooling shaft. Wipe a light coat of grease on the shaft and then install the bearingless unit. Test the spindle at several RPM ranges to ensure the issue was resolved. Be sure to reset the spindle orientation offset at parameter 257 to the correct tool change position for the side mount tool changer or the umbrella style tool changer. If you're a next generation control user or you're running a lathe with C-axis, you need to contact the local Haas factory outlet for assistance to have them come and reset the spindle orientation for you. So that's it for the magnetic encoder. So now let's shift our focus to the non-contact encoder. A non-contact spindle encoder has no bearings, no encoder belt, or no encoder pulleys to worry about. Now it comprised of a reed head and a magnetic ring. It requires a specific gap, height, and run out to function correctly. To gain access to the non-contact encoder, remove the spindle head cover. Now, on 50 taper machine, you must remove the tool release piston first, and this tool release piston is about 80 pounds. So be careful, and also be careful not to lose the standoffs. On 40 taper machines with non-contact encoders, the encoder is mounted to the top of the motor. The non-contact encoder is a very robust and more reliable system. There are two types of failure, a cable fault and a communication fault. Let's take a look at these issues. A spindle speed was commanded and the machine generated an alarm, serial encoder fault. First, put the machine in e-stop mode and check the cable connection at the processor. 
Make sure the connection is correct and secure. If it's okay, remove the spindle head cover to gain access to the encoder reed head. Use a multimeter to check the continuity between the reed head and the spindle head casting by placing one probe tip on the M8 connector of the reed head and the other probe tip on the casting. If there is no continuity, remove the reed head cable and the jam nut from the R8 connector and use a small screwdriver to scrape off some of the anodized layer from the reed head body for better contact. Reinstall the jam nut and cable and test it again. If it's still not working, replace the cable. Next, you command a spindle speed, but the RPM does not change on the screen as the spindle rotates. And the machine generates an alarm, serial encoder cable fault. This alarm means the gap between the reed head and the ring is not correct. Therefore, the encoder is not able to provide the correct feedback to the control. So the reed head needs to be adjusted. The gap setting between the reed head and the ring is 12 thou. Use a piece of mylar shim stock to set the encoder gap. Do not use steel shim. It will damage the reed head and the encoder ring. Before setting the gap, the spindle belt must be tensioned to spec and the encoder ring must be indicated within spec. Here's how to set the gap. Loosen the two fasteners on the reed head and slip the mylar shim stock between the reed head and the ring. Do not put too much tension against the mylar shim and then tighten the fasteners. Recheck the gap with the mylar shim after the fasteners are tightened to ensure the gap is correct. Test the spindle at several RPM ranges. Now, after the issue has been corrected, the spindle orientation must be checked and set correctly. For this process, you'll need to contact your local Haas factory outlet for support. Thanks for watching.